you're very kind. How lovely. Thank you so much. Well, that's... <laughs> Thank you. Ah, thank you very much, that's lovely. Now, hello and welcome to Friday Night with Jonathan Ross. So, ladies of Britain, brace yourselves. Prince Harry is single and on the loose. He's back on the market. He's split up with Chelsea. Hey, there she is. Blimey, she's orange, isn't she? <laughs> hey, she looks like an easy jet checking desk, doesn't she? <laughs> but if that's how he likes them, good news, because the replacement is already in town, flown in from the States. Yes, yeah, she is. <laughs> Well, we did say easy jet, didn't we? Now, <laughs> so he could move from Chelsea to Paris. You see, you see what we did there? I think she'll snare him because she's been trying to learn about our monarchy. Although she does think Lady Gaga is third in line to the throne, she hasn't got it. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we have a look and see who's in my green room for your entertainment this evening, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Not a bad idea. My first guest is an American actor who was the first, and for many people, the only captain of the USS Enterprise. He is, of course, the majestic William Shatner. There he is. Mr. Bill Shatner, how are you, sir? Lovely to have you back. Hello, William. Well, I'm going to try something I've never done before. I'm going to try and greet you in Klingon. OK? OK. Kal Egg Hachanesh. How dare! How dare you say that to me in Klingon? Is that the How thing? dare you I, I, say that? that. I love the way you speak sometimes. The camera came on. <laughs> now I can be loquacious. Marvellous, Mr. William Shatner, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Fluent in Klingon. My next guest is a comedian, actor, and now, blimey, he's a proper film star as well. He is, of course, Mr. Eddie Izzard. <laughs> Eddie Izzard. Looking handsome, Eddie. Yes, of course. I hate it in here. <laughs> it's very creepy. It's horrible in here, because everyone thinks it's a room with a relaxed thing, but it isn't, and you never show the people over here okay. who are... <laughs> Flip the camera around. Let's show how lovely camera. it is. Flip the camera around. Okay. Flip over, over there. That's it. No. Flip the bloody camera. No, what's wrong with that? What's... that people don't weird. really think it's a relaxing room. <laughs> My next guest, ladies and gentlemen, is the amazing Glenn Close. Yeah. 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 Hey, Glenn, how are you? Looking fabulous. Watch out for the shot now. Hello. You know, it was, of course, a long time ago. Uh, I think you'll always be associated with Fatal Attraction, no doubt about it. And there's that fabulous scene uh, which stays with you, the, the, the boiling the rabbit scene. That's a terrifying moment. That scene has put more men off infidelity than mobile phone records. <laughs> Poor little Flopsy, eh? <laughs> and you know what? After watching that, most men were little Flopsy for about a month after. <laughs> and the one, the only Lily Allen, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey, Lily. Hey. You look so I love the black hair. You look great. Right now, before we start the show, I'm just going to tell you something that happened to me at home, and this happened for real. I went out the weekend. I took my wife on a date. We, we thought, we'll go out, we'll have a date without the kids, we'll go and see a movie. And we went to see, we decided to go and see My Bloody Valentine in 3D. I don't know if you've seen that, it's out at the moment. Okay, it's good fun. They've got the special new 3D glasses. They're not like the old red and green ones, they're like polarised up glasses. I thought, I like these glasses. I thought I looked quite dashing in them. They were the glasses. <laughs> so, I didn't hand mine back in, I kept them. And she said, you meant to give the glasses? I said, no, I'm going to keep the glasses. And I wore them, I was wandering around Leicester Square in the glasses, thinking I looked quite smart. Hoping someone would come up and ask what the square root of 79 was. I'm ready. <laughs> Took them home, kept them on, went and saw the kids. I said, take the glasses, Dad. I said, no, I'm going to stick with the glasses. I like the glasses. They're not 3D anymore. Put them by the side of my bed. Now, I'm very short-sighted. I took my contact lenses down, had my proper glasses there and the 3D glasses there. Middle of the night, the burglar alarm goes off. Okay? I don't know why. I'm fumbling for the glasses to turn off. I put the 3D glasses on by mistake. So I'm naked, I'm wearing 3D glasses, I'm sweating, I can't see. I can't punch a number in, the police come round to the door. I said to my wife, you have to go to the door. She said, I said, I'm not going downstairs wearing 3D glasses, naked, talking to policemen, I'm trying to stay out of the papers at the moment. <laughs> Wouldn't that have been a great photograph? I mean, just come to the door like this, naked. <laughs> talking to police. Then I thought I'd done it on purpose, for attention. <laughs> Shall we get my first guest out, ladies and gentlemen? Why don't we have the privilege of being the first to try out our new couch? Look at that, we've got a brand new couch, ladies and gentlemen. The 15 series, people have complained about our couch. We ignored them until Tom Cruise mentioned it in passing, went straight out to World of Imitation Leather, bought a new one. <laughs> so please welcome, and I hope he's wearing his special test buttock so he can tell us what it's like, Mr Eddie Izzard! Is it, 
Because you've been on the old, the old have, couch, you're the, christening the it The old now. one was words that could have been used on a radio programme. Was it really? Um, it was not nice. <laughs> it was. It was not good. <laughs> it, it's actually better. It's more bouncy. It's, you can look vaguely human sitting on it. Okay. It's actually better. I would say yeah. that it might be the best one that I've been on, uh, the best seat that I've sat on in, in all chat shows I've ever been on. Wow, that good. Yeah. But, you know, the, the problem with the couch on already is that if people are just going to come out and talk about how comfortable it is, yeah. we're screwed because we won't, have, we won't ever get to an interview. We're, we're okay. knocked back and, yes, yeah, we yeah, were... So let's, to... not, let's not go on about it. No. Will you please stop squirming on the new couch? I'm just trying it out. <laughs> I tell you what, I, I find I like it, it hard to find. It's got another, uh, the, the white pillow. Do you find it hard to find the white pillow? No, I don't use pillows. Oh. What do you use? Nothing. I don't have pillows or couches or anything. I don't really buy anything. I live in my head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> floating. Yeah, right. it's just kind of... Oh. Well, no, but whereabouts, while you're in your head, or whereabouts in the world do you call home, Eddie? Because I think of you as being quintessentially English. You know, the way you talk, your comedy, that kind of thing. It's so English. And at the same time, you seem to be in the States most of the time. Now, I guess that's where... And I was born in an Arabic work. country. And I lived in Northern Ireland. The best time of my life was four years in Northern Ireland. And I lived in South Wales. So, really, I'm just a human being. Uh -huh. And, uh, so but I do, I have, I have been based in L.A. and I go backwards and forwards, but my, my heart is here. My heart is always, is England, Britain, Europe, yeah. here. I do like it here. And, but I have, there's work over there, so I go over and do work. Exporting Britishness around the world. Uh, you're in, uh, you're in boy mode this evening. You're boy mode, fully yes. masculine. Uh, yes. So when do you decide, or how do you decide what, what sort of mode you're going to be in? Is it, is it a whim thing? It's a mood thing? The it's, girl boy uh, thing, I, I, it's like a superhero thing, like uh, Fantastic Four, flame on, flame off, you know, the, yes, the, the, the human um, torch. The human torch, oh. and I can do girl on, girl off, and it's, it's like that. You but but what, in the morning, the what makes you decide? Is it where you're going to be, who you're going to meet? The position of the stars, the last <laughs> night, I check, and then I have a sextant, <laughs> and, and I work out where sailboats are, and then I decide. And then I throw dice and I shout, and then <laughs> I throw on whatever's left. Yeah. But I wonder whether in uh, in the states, especially working in what is still, you know, in some ways a fairly conservative business, whether it's an issue, whether it's a problem, whether it's something you have to kind of be a bit more guarded it, about. It's uh, I don't know if it's a it's a huge social problem, but it's a definitely a casting thing that gets in people's brains. Like if you turn up wearing a dress and heels, they they don't say, hey, let's make him kill the guy in this film. They just <laughs> it gets in their way. They yeah. go, Will people <laughs> well, be able to see this? It's still a surprise if someone didn't know you're going to wear it. I guess. Yeah. Well, most people do now. Yeah. Um, not mo well, some people. Yeah, I don't know. Are you just you just got to do it, man. You just yeah. got to get out there. You just got to. Uh, let me ask you about Valkyrie, because you and Valkyrie, we had Tom Cruise on last week talking about Valkyrie. It's a movie which I very much enjoyed. It's a great link. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were costumes involved of us all. But um, working with Tom then, how was that like? That must be intimidating for someone. Uh, you're in a movie, it's a great part to get. It's not a huge part of the movie, which nope. is probably a good thing. Pivotal, maybe. Yes, it's very crucial. Uh, your first day with Tom Cruise, do they start you gently? Do they give you a small part or do they put you straight in on the deep end? They gave me a six-page scene, which in film terms is a huge scene and uh, I don't know if you're going to show it, but it, 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 it was a tough first day. You've just put the uniform on for the first time and you've got how you're looking and the glasses and the period glasses and everything and then, OK, Tom Cruise, hi, Tom. Boom, yeah. six pages, which is all day shooting. Is that the scene in the bathroom? That was the yeah, big scene. scene. That the is bathroom. the scene we have. So and this that, was your first day at work. That was my first seconds. And then we shot it every which way but Sunday. And it was tough because he'd been shooting for a month. He's Tom Cruise. He runs the studio. Um, and, uh, yeah, you'd rather rehearse for four weeks first. Uh, and uh, do you take, does he talk to you throughout it? Does he say, I liked what you did then, or I didn't like what you did then, or, or is that just the director? Do you, do you interact what, with Tom him? What, Tom or the director? Yeah, Tom. Uh, uh, um, no, he wasn't uh, really doing that, but he was coming up with suggestions and, uh, and offers, you know, and you, there's sort of a, a, a rule actors need to say, you know, would you mind if I put yeah. some suggestions forward? And did you give him some back? Did you say, yeah? yeah I said, yeah. not that, no, do it, uh, do it a patch. Um, <laughs> not like a pirate. I said, not like a pirate, uh, mainly, I said to Tom. <laughs> and and he, he, he took that note. He thought it was a good yeah, note. Yeah, it was a good note. How exciting must be knowing, you know, I know you wanted to be in movies all along. Now you're in a film with Tom because you're making proper Hollywood movies. It's absolutely brilliant. And I'm encyclopedic about World War II. And this film is great because it's the first film, international film, that the German kids can go and see. And it's the Germans trying to kill Hitler. But it's actually, it's the Brits trying to kill Hitler because we're all playing Germans. So yeah. it's a movie. You can put Germans and English in the same room, <laughs> put Valkyrie on, it'll all be yeah. great. This okay. is a proper career you have going on there. I mean, presumably people come to you and they know now you're an actor and you, I get, you, get, you get offered pretty big parts, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's, it's still I'm hacking my way up the mountain and, you know, and still some people will go and say, oh, I've seen him do comedy, so this is weird. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's what I want to do in the first place. Yeah. So I've just done the standard curvy route of accountancy, street performing, stand-up into yeah. drama. The it's, way. it's the other way. The but you're not going to give up doing stand-up, are you? Because I know the no, fans no. of your stand-up will be heartbroken if that's the case. No, I played here in, in the West End and I'm doing, and, and I'm announcing here on your show, I'm doing a massive tour at the end of this year in is the United this the, Kingdom. This is the tour you did in the States, so it is. It's strip? 
stripped? Yeah, this is stripped. And I've done it here to a small amount of people in London, but I'm going all around playing Wembleys and uh, O2s and whatever. And then I'm going to play Madison Square Garden in, wow. uh, in New York. And then I'm going to play Outer Space. Yeah. Um, you would, if there was a chance of going there, you would do Outer Space. First gig on the moon. If Richard Branson gets the moon, I'll do a gig there. But who but would be there to see it? Small moon people. <laughs> <laughs> but you wouldn't be able to hear the laughing, would you? No, no, but it's it's no, it's good. It's I'm playing big gigs and small gigs. That's yeah. that's the thing. And, uh, and it's announced because they can buy the tickets 10 a.m. tomorrow. 10 a.m. tomorrow. And 10 your, your gigs sell out pretty quickly, don't they? I would have they do tend to go, but it's uh, yeah. And some people, you know, people say it's giantism. You're playing two big venues, but you know, they're playing a small venues as well, thousand seaters in and amongst the big venues. So. How does your act travel though? Because I know that you obviously what's funny is funny to a certain extent. But if you are in uh, say let's say the more traditional parts of America, if you were down south, those places, oh. do you tone your act down? Do you change it? No. Well, I, I've come to the conclusion. Uh, the I've come to the conclusion personally that, for, you know, spiritually, that God-wise, I've decided God isn't there because He doesn't seem to have any plan going on. And, uh, and I think a lot of people in Europe have sort of moved away from God because we had two world wars and a lot of death and yeah. he didn't come down and flick Hitler's head off at any point. <laughs> Which you think he would have, just while he was making his speech. But then neither did Buddha, no, neither did any of the other guys. They come all and flick his head off. No, no, no. Buddha's not a god, though. No, is he not? No. What's Buddha? Buddha's just a bloke is who had really? a lot of biscuits and had some good thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> he is. That's the whole thing about Buddha. So a really, a, a really nice fat bloke. Yeah. Well, he, I, he obviously was a thin... He was keen Al Reeves and then he... He was thin initially. And then he said, well, hang on. And... I have another hobnob, and then, you know, <laughs> he wasn't doing that whole cardio, no cardio. I love being before. with you, because I always learn so much. <laughs> <laughs> Buddhism is the only one that doesn't have a god. He's not a god, there's no yeah. godhead. They have no godhead. Okay. And so I believe in humans, I just don't believe in the bloke upstairs. Going to America, interestingly, you can't get elected in America without being with God in some shape or form. And I don't think you can get elected in Europe being with God. You don't, you, don't, you know... Uh, really? You think that's the case? Well, Tony Blair became more religious once he left Yeah, he was, he, was, he, he was kind of almost in the closet. About yeah, well, him. he sort of played it all yeah. down, yeah. and um, it, it's like an inverse thing. That's the way, but down the middle of America, I was playing to socially progressive audiences, so you have 2,000 people come in who, who weren't the kind of uh, Bible match. Yeah, the sort of people who do that probably wouldn't go and see you in, in yeah. concert anyway, would if they? I was no. better, if I was, I'm quite a sort of big um, uh, hey. cult... Big headed idiot. <laughs> but no, but you know, I'm not hugely well known. I'm not yeah. known like Tom Cruise is in America. Of course not. And if I come in, you know, a few years' time when I come into the middle of America, they might get outside with placards and go, he's weird. But you don't change your act then. You don't go in there and, and leave bits out knowing that no. it might offend you. You just go. Same thing. Iceland, London, Paris, um, St. Louis in the middle of America, or Memphis, Nashville, same gig. I liked, uh, I saw you at Amnesty International. You, oh, yeah. You, you, think there. Uh, and, and you know what? Uh, genuinely, there is, you do seem to structure it. I don't know if you do this deliberately or the way it works, but you do, there, it is genuinely a kind of a learning experience sometimes. You put information into your act as well. Oh, well, hopefully. I mean, you know, there's, I mean, there's all Wikipedia there, which obviously has stuff, and I know you, you use the internet a lot. But I'm, I realise the stuff. Hang on, we should explain, mainly for social networking, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? <laughs> don't get the wrong idea there. It is the Twitter okay, thing yeah, you yeah. mentioned yeah, you yeah. Know, last week. Um, and uh, it's, it's such great information out there. Before that, we used to not know about things, and you just wouldn't. You have to join a library, yeah. and now you can find out about stuff. Shove it into your material, and people can actually get some facts. So out the it. stuff you're doing, like uh, about cavemen and studies, men, is that was that Wikipedia based? Do you study that first, or was it just an interest you had? Away? Yes, yes, it's stuff I know, and then I think about it, and then I say it, and then I think, hang on, are those the right dates? And then people actually tell me those are the wrong dates, or I, I do Q and A's with people, and they say, hang on, you've got that wrong. Yeah. And so I've tried to change it so that it's almost all factual. And then just me putting weird scenes like the, the day before Stone Age when they went hunting with nothing and said, we're just going to slap this bison till he dies. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then they've read, stones, that's it. Ah, brilliant. Who, why don't we think of stones? You know, lots of them lying about the place. And, and when you're on stage, you know, you know something's working already just because getting laughs, or you take it out if it isn't getting big enough laughs and go and working again, or just throw it away? What do you do? Yeah, you give it about five goes, five, six goes. Some pieces you keep forever, even though they're not funny. <laughs> and, um, and why uh, do you do that? Just because you can't say goodbye to them? Well, yeah, there was a, there's a badger bit I talk about. A badger keeps asking God for different food stuff because has, God hasn't invented food, because I'm using God even though I don't believe in him. Um, and he's, he's coming up with food stuff, and he refuses it, and God says, oh, badgers can be choosers. And, <laughs> and see, that's the, that's the reaction from that's the audience. That's a terrible joke. I know, but I love it, because who does... You know, badgers can be choosers, badgers can't be choosers. That's just a stupid thing, but I insist on keeping it in. But Glenn loves it. I know she's a fan. You're, she's a fan of the badger-based material. I do. I think it's really funny. <laughs> but I well, liked your thing about gun control and the ape, too. 
Oh, yes, that's the a, chimp. When, that was an um, uh, NR, National Rifle Association in America, saying guns don't kill people, people kill people. But I said, and monkeys do too, if you give them a gun. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they've got good aim. Yeah, and then I said, you've got to give a gun to a monkey and put him into Charlton Heston's house and film it. Because he was very pro gun, and uh, and he was in Planet of the Apes, so I guess yeah, and he was Planet the whole monkey okay. gun thing, and the monk you train the monkey to reload really well, but to shoot, not you don't train him to shoot, so he's just shooting anywhere, and then reloading like an FBI guy, and then just shooting. You know? So I filmed this in my head. And you know, you know where I want to go on holiday next time I go on holiday inside Eddie's head. That's why I want to go on holiday. I like to see it up close. Eddie, great to have you here again, nice ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Eddie Azard. Marvellous. Yeah. Eddie is on. Yeah. Can we get my next guest out, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Uh, so great work. Ladies and gentlemen, the fantastic Glenn Close. Yeah. <laughs> lovely to have you here. Oh, lovely to Thank be you. here. Sit down on the new comfy this is couch. Very, very. Uh... Lumpy looking. Well, you look, you look incredible. Thank Come and sit you. down. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, um. congratulations on that performance. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, congratulations <laughs> are in order, I believe, because you now have your star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Is that why? I that... do. Wow, and that was quite recent. It was. Well, look at there. Well, you're obviously thrilled by it. <laughs> <I'm not quite laughs> <sure>. <laughs> uh, uh, do you know who, uh, who you're next to? Who's on either side of you? No, do you have I a don't, that? because they had all that. They had a big platform, yeah. and it was hard, and I, and I was so preoccupied. I, I didn't think to think who I'm going to be next to I'm into sorry. eternity. So you haven't been back to see it yet? You haven't uh, walked yet. up on no, it? Not yet, no, no, no. And do they, uh, do they have someone who looks after it for you? Do they have someone make sure that the gum doesn't get stacking on there? and they, you know, I kind of want gum on it. <laughs> You want it to look lived I in. I want it, yes, I want it to be lived in. Uh, well, you know, um, over the Christmas period, and I'm sure you get this all the time, but no one can forget the performance you gave in Fatal Attraction. That really was just, what a remarkable movie, wasn't it, ladies and gentlemen? It really is. Uh, a unique uh, and brilliant performance in a, you know, one of those movies you don't forget. I watched it with my kids over the Christmas period because I like watching old movies with them. And what was interesting, I thought, no, no, no. Some well, pretty racy <laughs> scenes for kids. No, you know, I, I, I said, this is a great movie from the 80s, and don't, you know, we can shut your eyes How did you explain the elevator scene? Well, that was a scene, I think, when I said, don't look. Oh. <laughs> uh, and my daughter said, Dad, I've seen Sex in the City. So uh, oh, how do you prepare for a scene? Because that's the kind of fruity scene with you and Michael Douglas. How do you get yeah. warmed up for a scene like that? Um, I, the, the, I knew the prop guy, Tommy Saccio, who had been in my first movie. And um, I said, uh, I just want a picture of margaritas. <laughs> so you got drunk? I did. So you were, you were drunk when you yes, were... Yes, and I had no cares. Wow, I, that's yeah. a great way to do it. <laughs> And, and did, uh, Michael didn't take advantage Michael of Michael was really that. happy. <laughs> 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 and surprised. <laughs> did you fall asleep afterwards? No. <laughs> That's what us men do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing about watching it with my kids and watching it again myself, so I remember the time I saw it and, I, and it played out very much as a kind of, you know, an action horror thrill almost, like a psychological thing. But watching with the kids, more so than before, I really felt for Alex, for the female character in it. Because she's actually, in, until you go and kill that bloody bunny, we were all on your side. You know, the kids as well. Did, did you feel that when you were making it? Were you empathising more with her or did you see her as the villain of the piece? Oh no, I empathised with her totally. Because my research for that film was, first of all, the, when I read the script and I couldn't get that out of my mind, I thought the rabbit, the bunny boiling was a little over the top. Yeah. And so when I got the part, the first thing I did was give the script to two different psychiatrists and said, is this behavior possible? And if it is, what would create it? And of course, they both came back and said, yes, there are people who will do this. And it was the exploration of what would create that behavior that made me really love her. I mean, she was a, 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 in great duress. She, she was not a uh, evil person. She was someone who, who needed help. Yeah, he, he's, he, he was the one misbehaving. Yeah, yeah. Were you at all concerned about doing it? Because I know the ending was changed in a way that you didn't particularly agree with. Initially. Oh, yeah, no. I, uh, the, the original was a seamless film noir. And with all the research I'd done, that certainly was a character who would have killed herself before she killed anyone else. Yeah. So when they came back to me, uh, the character had disturbed people so drastically when they tested it that they decided to, to kill me off. Um, and uh, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I thought they were joking, and I felt I had betrayed. It was a terrible moment, actually, for me, that I would betray this character, and, but finally, um, I actually called up Bill Hurt, who I just finished working with, and said, uh, this is happening. I'm trying to, 
you know, I, it's, a, it's, it's a crisis. And, and, the, and um, he said, well, you've fought your battles, you've made your point, and now you owe it to the people who you worked with in the film. Just bite the one. bullet and do it. It probably maybe wouldn't have been as big a hit if it had the ending you, you initially wanted, which was, I of think course, that's true. more satisfying in some ways. Much, but it's much more cathartic. Yeah, yeah, people you have to, well, certainly Americans want to have the, uh, they want to feel that the family has a possibility of getting back together yeah, again. Yeah, of course. Um, you know... But well, you look like it, isn't it hard to believe that's like almost 20 years ago or just about 20 years ago? You don't look like you've aged at all. Oh, please, how nice. <laughs> but, man, how do you keep in shape? What do you do? Uh, um, I would like to say that I go to the gym every day, but I don't. But didn't you do a... You've done a triathlon fairly recently, is this right? You did a... Uh, last May. Wow. I've done a, a mini triathlon. Well, what's a mini triathlon? Then? Um, smaller than a... No, no, Major yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> I gathered that, but is, but is it like still? Is it like just walk your dogs, pick up some bags, no, go home and sleep? No, no, it's or like it five hundred. A... I don't know how it's a it's a long thing in the pool, and then you you bike for twelve miles and run three miles. That's incredible, uh, and you must have been uh, exhausted by the end of it. I think. was. It was an absolute torture. It was uh, terrible. I did it twice. You did. I twice. thought the second time I'd done so much better, and it was exactly the same time <laughs> as the first one. Uh, would you do it again? I don't know. I don't know. If, maybe if I can train, but I'm a really bad swimmer. That's my downfall. And you're inside because it's in Maine, this yeah. particular triathlon. In the beginning of May, it was very cold. And, um, and I, in my innocence, uh, asked this really nice guy who heads it up. I said, can I, is it okay if I use my snorkel and mask? <laughs> <laughs> so he said, sure. So I came and... Um, all these people in their speedos and their, you know, bodies, and they're really serious about it. And I was there with my snorkel in my mask. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they start the race, and you, you know, you all of a sudden realize you can't dive in with your snorkel and your mask. The, you know, the whole gallery of people who are the better athletes because they're not the first wave yeah. are watching. And I really, and I kind of got into the pool like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Then I totally lost my breath and did the whole thing backstroke. It was yeah. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> then I kept saying, you just have to finish, you just have to finish. Uh, <laughs> well, it's a bold thing to do. Well, congratulations. <laughs> well, I would never even think about doing one, and I'm only in my late 20s, so I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the willpower. Uh, now, have you seen uh, Glenn in Damages? Uh, what a fantastic show. I've just, I missed it when it was going out, and I have the box there now. Incredible drama. What a great part as well. It seems to me, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but there seems to be so much good writing in TV, especially American TV at yes. the moment. It's, like a, yes. it's almost like a golden age. I think it is. I really think it is. And I think, actually, shows like ours, these really um, challenging, complex drama series, I really think it's a new art form. Yeah. And well, I think Mad it's going to endure. Terrific. You have yes. West Wing's been terrific yeah. on and off for years. Uh, Pioneered by The Sopranos. And okay. a lot of the writers that, that worked on The Sopranos are now doing these other shows. Our head writer was on The Sopranos, and, and it really is, I think, ushering. And in. another tough woman you're playing here, another, and a woman who's kind of like, you know, um, initially at least it's quite hard to sympathise with her when you see what's going on. As I said, I, I haven't finished that first series. Uh, there's something <laughs> about you that people seem to come to when they want you to play someone who's, who's hard, who can be cold, who can be kind of I focused. Don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> Maybe they need to see you in your snorkel, then they wouldn't... Uh, they wouldn't you. Yeah. But when you do a TV show like that, it must be like shooting a very long movie, I guess, because it's the same sort of level of drama, the same commitment for work, but it's a... Uh, I call what we film. do a mega movie, actually. I think it's a 13-hour movie. Yeah. The uh, hours are really hard, it's very intense. I'm excited that there's a new series starting soon. I think it's starting uh, February the 15th here in the UK, and you mentioned William Hurd, who's yes. a tremendous actor. You, you're with him in this. Uh, can you set up the storyline? Can you tell us anything about the next series without giving too much away? Of the away? next season? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't like to say anything because people really like to. They'll, they'll come up to me in the street and they'll say, what's in the box? Don't tell me. <laughs> so they want to know so they're done. They, don't, they want to figure it out themselves. But Bill uh, plays, plays a character um, that Patty had known uh, 17 years before. We have a past and, and that past slowly comes out. He's, he gets into really bad trouble and comes to me for help, and it's hard for me because there is a past. You need people to be in bad trouble in these kind of shows. Yeah, I, I can't wait. I want to see what's going on. Bella DeVille, and that's a kind of a lighter role for you. It must be fun, though, having all that where you can go over the top, where you can just let it yeah. all, all out, I would imagine. Um, why did you choose that particular film? Were you a fan of the cartoon initially? Oh, very much so. Very much so. I, um, I have a little girl, so... Oh, well, she's not little anymore, but... Um, so I was really into the cartoons, and I kind of analyzed them because, um, as a mother, you learn very fast that there are not very many 
mothers in cartoons. The, the Disney cartoons that kill cartoons, them all off. Cartoons, well, it's like fairy tales. In fairy tales, you can't have a mother because the mother's too fierce. Yeah. Nothing would happen to the child. So Cruella is a classic witch. And uh, you scare the children, which in this story with the dogs, and then they're rescued. And I learned about that, that, I mean, in the cartoon, she says terrible things. She yeah. is really mean. And um, I got some of the lines back from the original cartoon because it, it, it was very evident very fast that the meaner I was, the funnier it was. Yeah. The more people enjoyed it. The, the meaner she, she becomes, in a way, less real while they're more fighting, and it becomes more of a kind of a big comic book kind of evil witch. Yeah, but she's still, I mean, I've had terrible, I, I don't, I can do the Cruella laugh. And uh, I was down in, in, in Mardi Gras once down in um, New Orleans, and this little girl and her mother came all the way across this big boulevard were kind of asking for my autograph. And I thought, well, this little child is there because of Cruella. And I looked at her and I went, ha 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 And the little girl went, ah! <laughs> Well, it could have been worse. You could have got drunk and done the lift scene in front of her. That would have been, that would have been, uh, that would have been terrifying, wouldn't it? That would have been all, all kind of trouble. Um, but in real life, though, you're, you're a dog lover, you're an animal lover, you have dogs, I believe, don't you? I do. I've had dogs my whole life. Do they, the ones you have at the moment, do they travel with you? Do you have them on film sets with you, that kind of thing? They go to work with me every day on damages. How nice. Yeah. Do you have them on your lap when you sit and watching TV? Do they climb on you? Uh, they do. They love it. Right next. Oh. They like to be I have mine. Have you ever licked one of your dogs? <laughs> Not on purpose. Because <laughs> I had my dog, I had two of them on my lap the other day, and uh, one of them saw the other one, and he started licking its ear, and uh -huh. he seemed to like it. And he licked it, and I thought he's just cleaning it. And he licked that ear for about 25 minutes solid. And I thought, I wonder what that tastes like. <laughs> the the other dog's ear. ear. Well, he was, he was right like, inside the ear, and he was yeah. like, you loved it. He was like that. And he was like, really going for it. And I thought, that's got to taste good, whatever that is. Because he won't stop it. And I thought, no one's watching, I'll give it a lick. <laughs> So I held his head and I'm now, yeah, it, it was revolting. <laughs> I didn't taste it in it, I couldn't bring myself Which, to it. What kind of dog did this you? This was my pug. You're, yeah. You licked a pug. I didn't want to taste it because when, I, when my started going in with it like that, he looked at me and he looked at me and in his eyes I thought, he, even he thought, this is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> well, because I think my, Jake does that to Bill. I think it's a thing that they do it to show who's the boss. Ah. So he probably thought, are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Glenn, how lovely to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, I can't wait for Damage to start again. And this, you finished this next series. We did, yes. Is there a third one planned? Or? There is a third one. Wow, I'm yes. very pleased. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Glenn Clough. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a lovely singing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glenn Clough. Bye-bye. Can we get my next guest out, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Well, I mean, there are some people who you just grew up with on telly. There are some people you, you watched all your life and it's hard to imagine television without them. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. William Shatner. <laughs> well, faces. Cri Criker. Criker. What was, the, what was that? Do you remember uh, much of that? Love or yeah. something really. Okay. Uh, Bill, how lovely to have you. Do you mind if I call you Bill? I think of you as Bill. Yeah, I think thing. you should think of me as William Bill. William Bill Chandler. Is this new? Well, people leave our furniture alone. Yes, it's brand new. It's, it's brand lumpy new. and sweaty. And... Is it comfy for you? you no, it's all right. Bit? Uh, thank you for coming over for us. Well, thank you for asking me. What's it like for you? Everyone must know who you are, I guess, wherever you go. Do you get, Everybody do you, knows who I am. Do you get special treatment? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's because they know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they can't be anywhere in the world, but they don't know about Star Trek, about Captain James T. Kirk. Pretty much a lot of people know. Where have that. you been recognised? What sort of places? Latest. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. Uh, Friday. Um, somebody calls me and says, uh, my friend is uh, the police chief going over to uh, Jordan yeah. and King Abdullah of Jordan is a fan and do you have anything you could sign? And so I found something and I signed it wow. uh, to King Abdullah from an admirer, William Shatner. But it must be a strange thing to carry around a character around with you from that long ago, I guess. Because I mean, you've played many other roles, you've been in many other movies and TV things. Yeah, well, I mean, it isn't like... It isn't any longer uh, uh, obsessive. You, yeah. Uh, so although, people have calmed down a bit. Uh, calmed down. The, I, the, another time. I don't know whether you, you know, whether you want to hear another story of uh, strange uh, recognition. But I was in Iran. Uh, the assignment that I was there to do was to shoot, to photograph a black leopard at night. And so we were in the wilderness areas. Bill. Of the, Bill. Yes. Did, did this actually happen? 
I'm really making it up. Yeah. I'm telling you the story. <laughs> that was the assignment, and they had uh, photographic, which is a whole other story yeah. about trying to photograph a black leopard at night, black on black. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but the story is that I'm in the wilds of the Caspian Sea, near in the area where this, it's the wild, one of the wildest areas yeah. in, the, in the world, and there's a little tiny tin pla plated place that uh, uh, sold um, uh, chicken kebabs uh, to the natives. <laughs> and there's a little tiny black and white television set at the very end that's on, and this, and this the nation. crew is like up front and we're eating chicken kebabs, and the guy with the big bear, the big bear hat, you know, uh, that, the uh, and, and the sword, and, <laughs> and he's the waiter, he's dressed up in a costume, and he comes over to me, I, are you Captain Kirk? It's really wild. Well, that does sound, it's quite, yeah. I'm, I'm exhausted just listening to that story. <laughs> I, I would have said crikey right there. Crikey. Right there. Um, you know, but there, I, I'm sure it's not a part you regret taking because no. it transformed your life completely. In a way, it transformed everyone's life. It, it transformed everybody's life. Yeah, yeah. The world is transformed as a result of my taking Captain Kirk. <laughs> Bill. That's my name. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little upset about something. You're upset? Yeah. Why? Because the new Star Trek movie's coming soon. I know. And you're not in it. You think you're upset? Yeah. <laughs> What? Yeah, exactly. exactly. What are they thinking? What are they thinking? What are they thinking? What are they no thinking? Why are we even talking about What's it? What's wrong with them? I'm not in it. I don't care. I don't know. <laughs> well, why aren't you in it? What's going on? I don't. Uh, you know, if I were producing it, I'd have thought, put Shatner in it. He'll get, he'll get on this show. Bill, Bill, you if know. you were producing it, you'd be starring in it, wouldn't you? Let's be honest. <laughs> That's right. I'd be starring in it. I'd uh, be directing it, and I'd own it. But you're... <laughs> Your, your, your friends, you're very close with Leonard Nimoy still, I believe, is close. that correct? Yes. So, uh, and he's Which was in tough, it. beating him into submission on that scene. Yeah, yeah. Well, you were always the better fighter. Yes, I was. And a lover. You always got the... Uh... <laughs> he disagrees. I know. Emphatically, but he's wrong. Um, <laughs> you always got on with the, the blue-skinned ladies and the green-skinned ladies. It comes off in your hand, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? I don't know. <laughs> You've got to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you... I've been told off by Captain Kirk. Um, do, you mi do you miss doing that particular show? Do you miss doing TJ Hooker? Are these shows are a big part of your life for a while. Do you miss those particular characters? Well, you know, those are series, and I'm in another series that... Uh, of course you are, yeah, uh, Boston Legal. Uh, ended, yeah. Um, doing a series is really a tough job. I mean, I know coal mining is tough, and... Oil, ri oil rigs are tough. Yeah, and then, that's proper tough. Especially in the middle. That's tough. Yeah, yeah. But doing 18 hours a day, trying to remember words, and... <laughs> well, that, that can get more and more difficult, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and dealing with the, the public and the people and the, and the, the anxiety and the tensions, uh, it makes it an onerous job, which you do with a love-hate relationship. Uh, you love doing it especially the parts that I have been uh, lucky to play. They've been well-written, and I uh, got uh, a lot of recognition, and it was great fun. But there is the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> there is the dark side of all that work and broken relationships and the fact that... So the you time you put in, the investment you have to make in something as major as that. That's right. Uh, let me ask you about T.J. Hooker. I love T.J. Hooker, ladies and gentlemen. It's a kind of a... Can I be honest with you? Don't say it's wrong way. It's kind of a guilty pleasure. Because... Uh, it should be an honest. You should... You should open up to the world okay. and yourself that you love T.J. Hooker. And you'll feel better. Uh... I love T.J. Hooker because it was the worst cop show in the history of cop shows. <laughs> it, no, it was I, great I fun. Had to, but... I had to ask you. You know what I mean, I... though? But it was kind of unconvincing as a cop show, in a way. Really? <laughs> Why, I wonder. Okay. It, 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 well, about a third of the way it was convincing. <laughs> and then it became more and more unconvincing. That's the, the longest conversation two men have had pointing guns at each yeah. other. Yeah. 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 Try and talk them down. That's what I said. Yeah. Try yeah. and talk them down. Uh, but they, that once was again, pretty bad. But it was... Uh, how many years did you do T.J. Hooker for? Uh, six. Six years. Mm -hmm. OK, and how, how long have you done Boston Legal for now? Five. So, so, so that's the longest so far. And it's coming to an end, unfortunately, Boston Legal. It, it has come to an end, oh, yes. Sure. Uh, a couple... 
month ago. So well, ago. we've got it over here. The last series is playing out now. You, you are? Yeah. I've mean, been playing here for uh, all these years? I think more or less. All was I more year. convincing as a lawyer than I was as a... Please don't take that personally. Why have you taken that personally now? Because <laughs> you're talking to me in public. Yeah, but <laughs> you didn't come in here harboring the illusion that T.J. Hooker was a gritty crime show, really, did you? Well, I'd like to live with the madness. The insanity of it was convincing, and now you've no, destroyed that. You and I'll have to get depressed now. <laughs> do, you, do you have any medication handy? Yeah, I'm going to start prescribing medication on the show in front of people who I don't even know. Yeah, I'll, I'll find something. Well, don't for take you. it personally. Okay, okay. I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> been put in my place by, uh, by Bill Shatman now. Uh, you know what I love about you, though? You've enjoyed all the experiences you had, and you seem very comfortable with yourself now, maybe more than ever before. Would I be right in that? Well, I'm going to die soon, so I better be. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. Come on. Well, maybe not soon, soon, but soon. I mean, it may not be an emergency for the show, but it'll uh, yeah. be an emergency for me sooner or later. Okay, no, but you're not concerned about that just yet. No, no. You? Well, I'm concerned about it. Well, I was uh... concerned about it when I was born. Yeah. But... <laughs> what you can do about that, no, it. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, we must have you back on more often to bring us in there, <laughs> our impending mortality. Well, it'll bring you back down to reality okay. so where you can face the facts. Let me ask you. You are going to die. Oh, Bill, go. <laughs> I've made plans. Do you have a, a grave spot thing? No, I don't have a bloody grave. <laughs> I'd buy one if I were you. <laughs> What are you going to do with your bits? Are you going to have yourself? Gonna are you going to be sprinkled uh, somewhere, or are you going to yeah, be? Yeah, I'm going to get sprinkled. Yeah, where, where, yeah. where about? Any idea? I, yeah, I have a, a exact spot. You got I'm... a sprinkling plan? Can you tell us about this, or is it one of those illegal sprinklings? You know, no, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a legal sprinkling. Where, where are you going? Do you want to? Well, sprinkling? I've got a, a, a farm and you got, people. Oh, yeah. You got someone to do the sprinkling for you? I've got people. I've got volunteers. <laughs> I haven't got any sprinkling sorted out yet. You don't have any sprinkling yeah, people? No, not yet. I'm thinking of having myself kind of like... You ought um, to run a contest. I want to be preserved. <laughs> like a jam? <laughs> <laughs> have, you seen, have you seen these wizened bodies in the Egyptian mummies? Do you see what they look like? I have seen them. You want to look like that? Yes. You don't want to look like that. Well, I thought... You don't want to look like that in death, let alone in life. <laughs> don't do that. Be sprinkled? Yeah, get sprinkled. Okay. Can I say, this is the weirdest conversation I've ever had in front of people. I, this whole evening, now... You mean, you're telling me that this whole evening is weird and you're talking about licking a dog's ear? Well, yeah, but... I'm not even anywhere there. Have you never been tempted to lick one of your dogs? I have. <laughs> but I didn't want to mention it to you, thinking you might think it was weird. <laughs> now, the next suggestion is, you lick my ear. No. No, no. no. <laughs> Although, without... No, no! No, no, I'm a guest here in the country. It's gone bad en badly enough as it is. I know. Hey, <laughs> speaking of that kind yeah. of thing, uh, I've been enjoying your book, which came out last year. Up Till Now. Up Till Now is the title of it. Up Till Now, yeah. which is on sale it's at bookstores book. well, it's everywhere a funny book. It's a funny book because right. you're a funny man. It's some great funny stories in yes. it. You've led some uh, a, a rich life filled with incredible rich, adventures. Tell me informative about... Informative life that's in the book, Up well, Till Now. Coco the Gorilla. Coco the Gorilla. Who would have thought you'd have had a close encounter with a gorilla in that book? Why wouldn't you think I would have a close encounter well, with Coco the Gorilla? I... Look, the, the Coco the Gorilla speaks... 600 words in sign language. This, this is an actual gorilla. <laughs> what? This is an actual... No, because people think now that we've both gone mad. This is... <laughs> we should clarify. This is an actual gorilla. Coco is a, a real gorilla you've met. Coco is a... a, a <laughs> Coco is a mountain gorilla. Mountain gorilla. It, it being studied at Stanford University... Now it makes sense. ...in, in, in America. <laughs> oh, OK. okay. Was that a whiff of no, something? No, 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 I just, just I was on. Because, because I, saw, we, I just... saw what you ate, and I, and I didn't want to be so impolite as to go, whoa. So you just went, whoa. But well, that was the idea, not the whiff, no, right? No, it was hot. I, the no, Coco thing got it was the hot. idea, like you pushed the idea aside. Hot. No. Okay. So Coco is a real, she is a real gorilla. A real gorilla, she signs. She, for example, put together the word water and word bird when she saw a duck land 
and a lake, and she put together water birds. So she, she synthesized <laughs> language. That's incredible. That's incredible. Intelligence, Remarkable. right? Remarkable. So, remark. I was told that story when I was up there. Yeah. A marvelous intelligence. There's no telling. I mean this seriously. There's yes. no telling. I'll do my serious voice. Please. There's no telling how... <laughs> Intense, how enlarged, how great the 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 minds of animals are in, in, in their subtlety in understanding. We don't know how much animals understand. How much did that dog like the taste of that ear? You just don't know. I, I think I do know too much. Too much. See, but that's a human uh, judgment on the dog liking too much to who lick. Am I, who am I to judge? Exactly. Who You're not I a judge? dog. You don't know how much that dog likes to lick. To I lick. promise you one thing. Look, no, I, I'm not judging dogs anymore. That's very good. You've learned your first lesson. So now, Coco has learned 600 words and communicates in sign language. Water bird. So now I'm in the cage with... with Hold on. How have you got in the cage? Why, why are you... Just because you can do that, why did you get in the cage with her? The environmental people wanted publicity to save uh, a species, uh, one of the many species. Of gorilla? Well, of other animals. So they thought by putting me, well, gorillas too, because uh, mountain gorillas are endangered. They are so, sadly so. Right. So, so I got into the cage <laughs> as a publicity stunt, okay? But the handler's over there, and there's nobody around. There's a young gorilla in the back room over there behind bar, shaking it because he's jealous of me. He has seen Star Trek. And... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm frightened to death. Yeah. And I'm advancing. I'm looking at Coco, who's looking at me with dark brown eyes. And as an actor, I know that if you just pretend, you're already starting to feel. And then you let the pretension generate the feeling. The emotions. Exactly. That's the English acting way of doing it. You do and then you feel, oh. as against the American feel and then you do. So I decided to do the English form, which was to say and lean forward, I love you. To Coco. To Coco. Because I didn't want to appear afraid. So I stand, I'm there, and I'm advancing. Coco's sitting right there, hands out like this. No, no, sit, sit. Sit, Coco, sit. I love you, Coco. Now, what did Coco do? She just looked at me with brown eyes staring at me and I advanced slowly thinking it'd be a good shot I love you Coco I love you Coco. <laughs> I love you Coco no one of these gorillas and are dying Co out and Coco <laughs> we were trying to procreate and the and that Coco's hand went out no oh, cupped you and cupped me no What a life you have lived. Sign, sign language. I took that as a sign language. Wow. Uh, wow. Well, we can't keep you because I know Coco's waiting for you back at the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> a man getting her through customs. That's some job. How great to have you here. Uh, he's one of a kind, ladies and gentlemen. Let's cherish him. It's Mr. William Shatner. God bless you, Bill. Thank you so much. Bill Shatner. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Coco. <laughs> William Shatner. <laughs> When I grow up, I want to be William Shatner. <laughs> what a coward, right? Should we get my last guest out, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Why don't we welcome the lovely Lily Allen? Yeah. Well, you look gorgeous. Uh, Lily, how lovely to have you here. Nice to be here. Uh, how's the new year? It's going really well. Okay, uh, you look great, you look in great shape, you look all together now, you look focused. Because uh, I, I feel, you know, I've had Lily on the show any number of times, many years ago, and I feel slightly paternal towards younger guests we have on the show. And when I see them look like a, maybe they're wobbling a bit, maybe going off the rails a bit, I worry. Did you think that about I me? I did think that about Why you. Why would you have thought that? Uh, Lily, everybody <laughs> thought that about you. <laughs> Um, but, you, but, you know, you're a young person and you would enjoy yourself when you go out and, of course, you're going to go out and, and occasionally uh, have a few too many drinks and so on and so forth. Uh, but have you, are you deliberately calming down now or are you just being a bit more health-conscious? What's going on? 
Uh, no, I just, I just do it behind closed doors now. No, I'm joking. Um, I, uh, I have calmed down a little bit. I'm working really, really hard, so I haven't really got time for that stuff. Because there's a new album out, which I don't know. Were you worried about that? A second album is often a bit of a challenge? I was, but it's going really well. Everyone seems to really like it. So yeah. Well, I've heard the single. I played the single weekend. It's fantastic. Congratulations. It's really good. Uh, now, I, uh, for the last few months, I haven't been reading the papers so much as I used to, for obvious reasons. Um, <laughs> Well, I understand uh, you, you've, been, uh, you've been dating. You were, you were going out with William Shatner for a while, I believe, yeah. in Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Coco. Um, <laughs> I can't wait to see you perform live. Are you going to do a tour again? I am going to do a tour. I think it's in March. I just did three gigs this week, actually. I did one in London last night. How'd it go? Um, it was really good. I like, you know, I went to see uh, Dizzy Rascal perform a little while ago. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I went in and I thought, oh man, it's, I'm, I'm too old to go and see the Dizzy Rascal, really. Uh, and I went to Dizzy Rascal and then finally I saw someone I thought, oh, thank Christ there's someone my age or above. And this woman came up and said, yeah, dropping the kids off like me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and this single is just out now. I think it's going to go to number one. Have, uh, has anyone uh, said that yet? Are you concerned about that? you think, oh, great, it's got to go well, to number one? Well, there's an, another lady called Lady Gaga who is, is number one at the moment. Yeah, but... She is Lady Gaga in action, God bless her. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> that's not so much the lady, that's just the gaga part. We're about. Um, but I think I'm a, I'm a bit ahead of her. At the moment. Well, good. I want to see you at number one. I love Lady Gaga too. I'm not playing favourites here. But I want to see Lily Allen. I can be your favourite. Okay, you can be your favourite this week. I want you back on top where you belong. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please join me in saying thank you, Lily Allen? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks to all my guests tonight, William Shatner, of course, Glenn Close, and the wonderful Eddie Izzard. That sounded great.